Mr. James Bullock and the ship that slipped through the net. The American Civil War was a period of great commercial opportunity and the British were very much involved. But there were rules. British companies were allowed to provide arms to both sides in the conflict, but shipping was different. The British were only allowed to sell fully armed ships that were ready for war to the north, whilst the south had to make do with only unarmed ships. But the British shipbuilders and the Confederate States had a way of avoiding these prohibitive rules. The ships for the south all left Britain unarmed and were fitted out for war somewhere else along the route by other British companies. A perfect system. But there was one ship that almost sank this adventurous balance. The Alabama. The Alabama, which at the time was under construction in a Birkenhead shipyard in England, had caught the attention of the northern authorities. They maintained that the ship was more fitted out than that was allowed and subsequently petitioned the British government to impound the ship. But neither the northern authorities nor the British government had reckoned with a certain Mr. James Bullock, the Confederate's agent in the United Kingdom for the purchase of shipping. James Bullock found out what was about to take place and took immediate action. There was no time to be lost. That very same afternoon, the Alabama, in great festive mood, left port for what was officially described as sea trials. On board was the mayor of Birkenhead, his wife, and many other very important high-ranking guests, and a brass band provided the music. However, upon arriving at Hollyhead, where the Alabama was due to turn round and sail back to Birkenhead, the band, the mayor, and all the other fine guests were put ashore. The Alabama then sped out into the Atlantic as fast as she could go. She evaded the USS Tuscarora and two other warships which were waiting for her, and then the Alabama set course for the Azores. There, she was fitted out with British guns and supplied with British ammunition. The Alabama was ready for service. And in the course of her action-packed life, the Alabama captured and destroyed ten Union ships in mid-Atlantic. She sank the USS Hatras in an amazingly brief encounter which only lasted 13 minutes. And then, on a round-the-world trip, the Alabama captured no fewer than 84 merchant ships. But then the Alabama met her match. The Alabama was defeated and sank off Cherbourg in 1864. Most of the crew and the captain were rescued by cheering spectators from a nearby British yacht. But that wasn't the end of the story. The British had to pay out more than $15 million in gold for compensation. Much damage had been caused, and many people had lost their lives due to British incompetence. $15 million. A very big bill for allowing the Alabama to slip through their fingers. But that was war. And where there's money to be made, there's always a way. And the Alabama made very much money. The Alabama, a ship that slipped through the net.